Hi there. Thank you once again for joining me in our study in 1 John. We are today in chapter 2. We are going to start at verse 18 and we're going to go down to the end of the chapter, verse 29. We are going to talk about how Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. How he is the truth that we must follow. That Satan presents many other ways for us to come to God, but the truth is there is only one way and his name is Jesus. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study in 1 John. As I mentioned already, we are in 1 John chapter 2, and we are starting at verse 18. John has been talking to us here and encouraging us not to get caught up in the things of the world, but to keep our focus on the Lord and to walk by the Spirit. Let's continue on here in verse 18. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard, the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. I think John is probably talking about the situation that Paul was experiencing where Many people were going out to the congregations that he had established, but they were trying to get the Gentile people to keep the Jewish law and to do the things of the Jewish law. It caused a huge upset uh, in the early church, and it, it, it was bringing in a lot of confusion. So John is just saying that we can see that the last hour is coming because the Antichrist is getting worse and worse. And of course, in the world today, we see this kind of thing. We see that there is so much corruption. There is so much going away from God, going away from the things of God. And it is very hard to sometimes take a stand for the Lord because of what the public opinion is. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and all of you know the truth. I do not write you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. John is basically writing here to encourage the receivers of his letter to walk in the things of the Lord, and he's also saying to us, right? He says, you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know what the truth is. You have been taught what the truth is. I do not write to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it, and because no lie comes from the truth. To abide in the truth is to abide in Jesus, because Jesus is the truth, right? Jesus says in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the truth. The truth is in Him. In Him, when we walk in Him, when we abide in Him, we are abiding in the truth. He goes on in verse 22 and he says, Who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Such a man is the Antichrist. He denies the Father and the Son. There's a lot of Antichrist spirit around today, in the world today. People that are denying Jesus, denying what He has done, denying what is available to us. In many situations, and even in the, my own country, if you go to a school, you can talk about just about anything, so long as you don't mention Jesus. You can talk about God, you can talk about Buddha, you can talk about all kinds of things. But if, if you mention Jesus, then it just brings offense to many people, and you will get kicked out of that situation. The liar is the man who denies Jesus is the Christ. And we know who the father of lies is. We know where lie comes from. It comes from the devil. He is a liar who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That Jesus mentions in John 10, verse 10. He is a thief that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He is a liar. He is not the truth. The truth is not in him. The truth is in Jesus. 
Jesus is the truth. The enemy is not the truth. He is a liar. The world is not the truth. It is a liar. It is Jesus who is the truth. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. This is a very important verse for us to understand because in the world today, many people are teaching that there are many ways to come to God, that you can come to God however you choose, through whatever medium you think that you want to come to God, you can come to God that way. But that is not the truth. That is walking outside the truth. Listen to what he says here. He says, no one who denies the Son has the Father. No one who denies Jesus can come to the Father. Whoever acknowledges the Son has the Father also. If you deny Jesus, you can't come to the Father. If you accept Jesus, if you accept who he is and what he has done, then you also have the Father. What does that mean? That means the only way for us to come to the Father is through Jesus. And Jesus tells us that himself in John 14 and 6. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The only way for us to come to the Father is through Jesus. Now, the world will tell you that that's a very narrow view, that's a very bigoted view, that you think you're right and everybody else is wrong. Well, it's not that I think I'm right and everybody else is wrong. This is what the Word of God says. This is what Jesus, the Son of God, says. He says of himself that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, don't you think that Jesus, who is the first of all creation, do you not think he who abided with the Father, do you not think who was sent down by the Father to make a way would know what the truth is and that he would reveal the truth to us? Because if that's not the truth, then he is a liar and the truth is not in him. But that's not the truth. The truth is in him. He is the truth. So when we accept him as being the truth, then we have the Father. But only through him do we have the Father. There is no other way. There's no other religion. There's no other manifestation in this world. There's no other thing that you can do to come to the Father except through Jesus. And it doesn't matter who you are, what country you're from, what nationality you are, what language you speak, what your beliefs are. There is only one way to come to the Father, and that is through Jesus. It is only through him that we have relationship. When we think that we can come to the Father any other way, then we are being deceived by the enemy. We are de being deceived by a liar who has come to seal, kill, and destroy. Because he knows if he can convince you that there is another way to come to the Father, then he will be able to destroy your life that you won't be walking with the father you won't have eternal life so it is so important for us to make sure that we understand that it is only through jesus that we can come to the father see that what you heard from the beginning remains in you if it does you will also remain in the son and in the father when we accept the the gospel, when we accept the words of Christ, when we accept what he has done for us, then that remains in us. Amen. And this is what he promised us, even eternal life. I'm writing these things to you about those who are trying to lead you astray. So John is writing because people are trying to lead each other astray. People are trying to say, no, 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 you don't have to stick with that. You can do whatever you want. You can make your own way. You can make your own pathway. You can follow this way or follow that way. And that's not the truth. There is only one pathway that we can follow. And his name is Jesus. If we try to follow a different pathway, we are going to go down the wrong road and it's going to end in destruction because it is a road that is built by a liar. It is a road that is built by deception. It is a road that does not lead to truth. It is only through Jesus that we are led to truth. Go on in verse 27, it says, As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you, and you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, 
and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it is taught you, remain in him. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. When we have the Holy Spirit in it, it leads us, it guides us, it directs us into what is truth. It takes us to the place where Jesus is. It reveals to us who Jesus is. It reveals to us the way that is set before us. And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. We will be confident and unashamed before him at his coming when we remain in him. Who is him? Jesus. He's talking about Jesus. I don't know if you're getting this or not. What it, I'm saying is that Jesus is the center of all of this. Jesus came to make a way for us and it is only through him that you can enter that way. In order to walk the pathway of truth, you have to go through Jesus. There is no other gate that you can go through. It is only through Jesus that leads us to truth. So if you want to walk in truth, it has to be through Jesus, not through any other way. There is no other way. Even though there's many proclaiming that there's many other ways, it is not the truth. Amen? If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. He is righteous. We are right. We become righteous when we're born again. Not that our righteousness comes from us. Not that we are perfect. Not that we are sinless. It talks about that in this letter, earlier in this letter. If anyone says he does not sin, he is a liar and the truth is not in him. We all fall into sin. We all have the need of a Savior. We all walk down a road where we struggle. And we need the Savior. And his name is Jesus. And it is through him that we come to eternal life. It is through him that we come to the Father. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. When we are righteous, when we know that he is righteous and we are walking with him, we know that we are in a situation where we have eternal life. We are in a situation where he is walking with us and where he is guiding and directing us. We can't do this on our own. If we think we can make up a way, if we think we can make up a pathway, if we think we can follow some other pathway that somebody else has made up, then we are fooling ourselves. There's many antichrists out there today. There's many things against Christ. There's many things against accepting Jesus as a Lord and Savior. Many people want to say, oh, there's many other ways. You don't have to go through Jesus. You don't have to go through Jesus. And it's a lie from Satan. The thing we have to remember, what we need to remember in all this, is that Satan does not have you in mind. He is not concerned for your well-being. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants to destroy you. He doesn't want you going to spend eternity with God. He does not want you to spend eternity with the Father. He does not want you to know who Jesus is. So he's going to bring up everything he can to stop us from knowing Jesus. Because when we don't know Jesus or we don't accept Jesus, then we do not belong to the Father and we are not walking with him. And the pathway we are walking down leads to destruction. So when the early church was going around and all these people were getting saved and all these congregations were being established, Satan was using these people to go around and to destroy that teaching and try to lead the people away from following Jesus and back into following the law, back into following things that didn't matter anymore. It is a, a really a difficult situation. We need to keep our focus on Jesus when we know him, when we've accepted him. We know that he is the way, the truth, and life, that he has come to give us life and life to the full. That's the second part of John chapter 10, verse 10. When Jesus says, a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, Jesus continues, he says, but I have come to give you life and life to the full. What a joyous thing that is. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light, that he has come to guide us and show us how to come to you, that we can proclaim that we are children of God because we abide in Jesus, because he is in us, that you have sealed our fate with the Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you for that. 
We thank you for that he is a child of promise. We thank you he is the one that leads us to you. And we thank you, Father, that he is the gateway that allows us to walk the road that leads to you. And Father, we just thank you for calling us to be your children. And we just ask your blessing on this video as it goes out. Father, may it touch many, many people. May it go wide and far. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. We'll see you on the next session. Okay, girls, take us home.